You know, with Bitcoin approaching 9,000 at the end of May, a lot of people want to go back into mining. But you guys got burned before, right? You guys got burned and got wrecked, especially those cloud mining people. But now there's a new company, and it's called Mineblock, and it offers you industrial grade mining, pooling resources together. Hi, my name is Sensei Shukri, and I am actually a blockchain consultant for a mining company. So I know a bit about mining, especially about mining gemstones. I've been through a real mine before, as you can see in uh, the video here, and I know how hard it is. These are the mines for the artisanal miners. They're small time, uh, they gotta upgrade their equipment, and they often run out of cash. Worse, they don't even get money from the bank. Now, if you are an individual miner, that's the plight that you are facing. You can never scale up, you can never switch uh, to a different kind of coin if a different kind of coin gives great returns. For example, Litecoin because of the halving that's coming up. This is where Mindblock changes the thing and changes the entire equation for us. They aspire to be the Amazon of mining. Let's see you on the inside so that we can review the business model of Mindblock to see whether it really is going to deliver what it says it will do. videos are meant to only be for educational purposes so it is not meant to be a buy or sell call or a call to solicit investment from you please consult with your financial advisor if you want to invest in IEOs ICOs or even STOs as they could be quite risky furthermore there are different regulations for each country and you should abide by the rules of your jurisdiction so the company that's uh, revolutionizing the mining industry now is a company by the name of Mind Block. Okay, remember this name, and I'm going to evaluate the business model here through the uh, six dimensions here of a sector, hype, use case, tokenomics, roadmap, and also intelligence. But what I'm most interested here in is the intelligence here because they say they want to be the Amazon of mining. And really, uh, when you talk about Amazon, it's always about the flywheel. So in the intelligence and actually the use case, we have to see if the uh, mind block business model actually follows the flywheel for Amazon and that will make it really great. It's of course in the exciting sector of mining. Everyone wants to go back into mining now, especially with BTC almost crossing 9,000. Okay, Bitcoin almost crossed 9,000 here in late May. There's a lot of hype in the sector now as far as the tokenomics and the offering uh is is concerned they're going through an i they're going through an sto now which is a security token offering so this is something that's really different from the rest it gives a lot of legitimacy to the business to see what a uh, mine blocked uh, is all about is basically about mining uh, as a service here offering opportunity for investors to take advantage of using the resources from a large scale mining operation. So this really changes you as the artisanal miner because you can participate in a very large scale uh, mining uh, operation. You don't need to buy, configure and maintain expensive mining equipment as you are now because we know if you do that, you know your ROI is going to be very, very slow and uh, you're going to be impacted, okay? So you can actually leverage on their infrastructure, okay? This is a big infrastructure play, which is why they also uh, compare themselves uh, to Amazon, which essentially uh, is a very big infrastructure play. As uh, you know, uh, we are going to explain later, uh, this is basically part of a virtuous uh, cycle that's going on here. So, you know, the vision is to become a major player in the cryptocurrency arena and for Mindblock to own a significant part of the infrastructure. That's very important because this word infrastructure keeps popping up. Required to process transaction and mint new crypto assets. So the investors can reap a significant return on investment while employing an aggressive growth strategy to position themselves as the Amazon. And this is part of what I'm going to describe later as uh, the Amazon flywheel. So apparently, uh, Mindblock has also set up in its own uh, flywheel. So there's a lot of advantages when you go and pool the resources into a big operation. For example, in terms of uh, security, fully secure data centers, multiple currencies, you know, they will mine whatever makes sense. Uh, you know, if Litecoin is it, then they're going to mine Litecoin. If Bitcoin Cash is it, then we're probably going to mine Bitcoin Cash to ensure you get a good spread and maximum possible probability uh, profitability. 
zero configuration. So you don't really have to spend time configuring your servers, configuring your, your ant miner and all that. Like now, right, wasting a lot of time and all that. This is all done for you. There's of course a hundred percent transparency because you know why they are doing this as a security token. So as a security token, everything needs to be uh, uh, transparent and you are essentially an investor, okay? You're an investor with rights, okay? I've explained that earlier. Support team is of course there to ensure everything goes well and your portfolio growth is going to go up, you know, as the price of Ether goes up. We see similar patterns and that should be repeated. So they have a dual token model here. This is very critical because MBTX is actually a polymath ST20 security token. So this is the token that gives you uh, the right as an investor into this company. This is not a utility token. The utility token is MBTU. This is what other people do. Okay, this is rent or buy private mining hardware. This allows you to set up uh, mining as a services and profits are paid into your own wallet. But here, it's like a share. Okay, it's like a share and monthly profit sharing statements and it's tradable on security token exchanges. So to me, this... Uh, Mind block being a security token exchange really gets a lot of uh, credibility because you know it's not about a, a utility token, it is about a security token and it costs so much more. Okay, so you have more credibility here, and that goes to a long way. And I'm sure that this is going to attract a lot of people to come into uh, this uh, opportunity. Uh, which, which, which we call here, uh, which is really a uh, mind block. So this is something that, that, that's really, really great that they are a security token. So fully dedicated mining uh, facility here. And you can see all the comparisons here between self-mining, cloud mining, and all that. Of course, uh, you know, self-mining variety is limited. Cloud mining fixed contract. I mean, guys, cloud mining is very, very bad, okay? This has destroyed a lot of lives. Even my cousin here lost about 200,000 here. 200,000 in losses because of cloud mining. You don't want to do that. You're going to go something like mind block, providing a full range of mind access. When you talk about agility, you know, operations will be constantly monitored and switched to improve output. They can switch between uh, coins, not only Ether, not only Bitcoin and all that. Evolution and because, you know, fixed growth strategy to increase output for investors because, you know, by uh, doing this Amazon flywheel strategy, what they do is they limit the cost while, uh, you know, as more and more people join, the cost is basically, uh, the, the fixed cost is basically very low. The marginal cost of getting or onboarding the next customer is very low and that's how they make the profit and transparency with 100% transparency. Of course, you know, you can do that, but there's a lot of work here and, you know, cloud mining always has this funny contracts that don't work anyway. Operational costs, of course, because they have the operation at the lowest available cost, then they will be in position to make a lot of money. Simplicity is a fully managed services for you guys. And finally, the growth strategy in place to ensure continued relevance. And, and you know, we can see that from the patterns of cryptocurrency, definitely the prices of cryptos are going to go up. And these are going to be advantages for people like MindBlock. So uh, this is not really like, uh, you know, like, 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 like cloud mining. You see all these X's in cloud mining. So, you know, if you want to go, don't, don't go to cloud mining. To me, uh, my recommendation is basically you go to self-mining, but you're going to be very tired here. You're not, you're not, you're not going to be very happy, okay? You're going to end up crying here. You go to cloud mining, uh -huh, you probably end up being scammed, but you go to mine block and you are going to end up being a very, very happy camper. And, and that is the way to go because the uh, business model for mine block really makes a lot of sense. So uh, let's go to the next section. So the next part that we're going to have to go to before uh, we determine whether this business model is good or not is basically going and look at the team. So here's the team behind MindBlock, Greg Wales, the co-founder and CEO. You have Matt Ruff, the CF, CSO, Paul Bishop, COO, another co-founder, Ruhin Khan, the marketing consultant, 
uh, Rishabh Anand advisor, Gagandeep Singh advisor, and the collective. This is for community management. So this is also uh, another new one. The offering is quite good. Okay, so let's see what Greg Wales is. And you know, I just, I just like to go to the LinkedIn so that, so that it's easier and just let's press the LinkedIn for everyone, okay? Uh, Matt Ruff, of course, is gonna be very important. And so is the, the other co-founder. I like to look at all the co-founders here. And uh, finally, uh, this guy is very important here, Gagandeep Singh. He is an advisor here. So I just want to know what their experience is, whether they have enough experience to actually bring this in. And I'm also looking for someone like an economist, okay? Because I think that mining is about a business and you really need good uh, economics in, in, in order to understand this. So uh, yeah, let's go to the first one here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is Greg Wales, founder and CEO at MindBlock and... And this is basically his LinkedIn. Uh, where was he before? He was at GW IT Limited, providing contract IT services, business engagement leads. So he has been there before, you know, director and owner of a company. Uh, this is very important because you want to see an entrepreneur lead this and not necessarily someone who has just come out of the corporate world. So the next person is Matthew Ruff. He's a sales and marketing director at Hydride, powered by Reliance, Worldwide, GDT, and ITN members. So apparently, this guy also has a lot of experience in uh, sales and, uh, and services, okay, but he hasn't really uh, updated. Oh, updated his, his, his resume here for MindBlock. So sales and marketing director is good. Hey, does Sally Sales. So his account management, yeah, I was in account management, also sales and IT consultant. So the fact that you're in sales is very good because it's very different being in sales, okay? You can't just bring a technical guy and expect him to sales. It's a entirely different skill set. So you need someone really experienced there. Paul Bishop is also the co-founder of MindBlock, operations director. Uh, yeah, MindBlock is about mining as a service. Where was he at? You just want to look at the track record, okay? Bishop Plumbing and Heating, a Limited Subcontracting Heating Engine. So this is more of uh, this guy. Okay? This is more of uh, uh, engineering type. Uh, That's why he's the CEO, probably the operations, looking after the, uh, the uh, construction of the data center. See, he's skilled in gas, construction, plumbing, heating, ventilation, and electronics. So this engineering professional is very, very crucial because in order to... to build up a, a mining farm. Yeah, he's building up a mining farm also. So the next one is the advisor, the Gandip Singh speaker, investment banker, I like that. Blockchain expert, entrepreneur, investor, advisor, OTC banker. So yeah, he has investment ninja contact here. So this is also good, he's an investment banker. I like that because when you do this, this is what I was talking to you about, okay? I want people who are in the economics of things. Okay, economics are people that uh, basically uh, need, uh, know how to get things done in the real world, no capital raising. And the fact that this guy is an investment banker is extremely uh, very, very good. And let's see the next advisor uh, here. Uh, who is he and what role does he play here? He's a blockchain and crypto evangelist, uh, Rishabh Anand. And it's from Delhi, India. He's the youngest cryptocurrency miner in the Oh, this is great. Starting at the age of 16. This is great, guys. Uh, he has the developer, creator, designer, full-time engaging, full-time uh, emerging entrepreneur. So this is good. The youngest cryptocurrency miner in India is actually part of the advisory. Uh, this is really excellent. So it, it, it seems that they have a very young and a very experienced guy. And this guy is so young. And I like that because there's a lot of new blood here too. Uh, include new ideas uh, into into a uh, mind lock and it gives you certain rights right because if i am an investor in the company and the company issues a dividend i have a right to the dividend i might have a right to the debt right you know uh, can be issued a dividend uh, they can issue me a, uh, you know i can buy a loan stock which i give a borrowing to them and then i get a debt so these are rights that are not covered in an ICO but are covered in an STO. Okay, so essentially an STO is an investment contract, okay? So being an investment contract, it gives us investors uh, a lot of rights like, uh, you know, control rights, uh, investment rights, uh, physical delivery rights, uh, litigation uh, rights and all that. 
comes to information rights because we need the uh, information in order to make timely decisions as far as our investments is concerned. So being a very uh, legal instrument, there are three things uh, that can happen now. It really changes this, this ownership right thing from what was a token in the ICO to an SEO because with an SEO suddenly, it's like money, right? You can trade the securities for other securities. You can use it as collateral because it is something that is legal and it's something that is valuable. You can also store it in many different wallets. And most importantly, this gives us the chance to tokenize a lot of asset using security tokens. So when you talk about Amazon, you know, you can't run away from the fact that, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos here, uh, he came up with this virtuous cycle or basically it's called now the Amazon flywheel and of course his mind block is going to be the Amazon okay if they're going to be the Amazon of the mining world then we need to understand the business model uh, if they're going to follow Amazon's business model of the flywheel is it designed based on this because it's designed based on this these guys are going to basically rocket okay rocket all the way to the moon the business wise thing so jeff bezos basically uh, probably drafted all this thing uh, this virtual cycle on a piece of uh, handkerchief and yeah it's gonna go to the smithsonian soon you know that that is such an expensive handkerchief guys such an expensive hanky so let's see what this virtual cycle is all about let's hear some things from jeff also so basically uh, for amazon everything starts with a good customer service you know they're very uh, famous for their awesome awesome uh, customer service right and because of their good customer service this is why customers uh, come to them there's a lot of traffic that that goes in here and traffic basically means more and more customers. And have you have more and more customers, guess what? You can now leverage your infrastructure. That's it, guys. The key here is infrastructure and bring outside sellers to sell to your community. This is really the, the great, awesomely secret of Amazon here, okay? So when you have that and you bring outside sellers, guess what? You have a lower cost structure, right? If you invest in infrastructure, that's fixed cost because the fixed costs now can basically handle more and more people here. And why do more and more people come in and feed your uh, virtual cycle is because you cannot have lower price because you will basically have more customers. And these goes on feeding into the virtual cycle. And then you have kind of other programs like improved efficiency, like you know, a fulfillment by Amazon that leads to faster and more reliable delivery. And eventually you have this cycle just going round, round, and round, and round, and round. And I think this really starts with uh, Jeff Bezos' dedication, okay? His ultimate dedication to the customer experience where they really, really know you guys, right? That is the secret, really, of Jeff uh, Bezos and also this, this great Amazon uh, cycle here. So clearly this virtuous cycle is really engendered by uh, this basically uh, infrastructure investment. Okay, so infrastructure investment uh, starts all this and uh, I'm glad to say that for MindBlock, it's like almost the same because you invest a lot in uh, infrastructure here. And uh, when you start with infrastructure, you basically can leverage on the infrastructure that you have by reducing this, this lower cost structure. That's really what this is all about. And so uh, let's take this into the mind block flywheel, right? So what they're doing, if event, uh, what they're doing is essentially building uh, this uh, infrastructure in investment so that all of you guys can, can join it. And this is the same thing that was done by Huawei, right? So let's see uh, this wonderful, wonderful video by the Huawei founder. Huawei started out by making simple equipment for rural markets. Instead of spending the money we earned, we invested it back into the business, making more and more advanced equipment. We were lucky China was developing its network industry on a big scale at the time. That's how we found a market. Founder. And then let's go back and see how uh, MindLock uh, can, can do this for themselves. So again, when they talk about uh, infrastructure investment, what uh, MindBlock is doing is really building this 
massive facility of, of industrial mining operations here. And of course, when they do this, as long as they have good customer experience, and I'm sure the customer experience will be good because they're going to give a profit sharing and all that. And this is not done like any other company, okay? This is done through an STO mechanism, okay? This is a security token offering and the polymath a token here, the polymath token allows you to do, uh, gives investors rights to the company, rights to dividends and all types of investor rights, which you don't have in the normal uh, token, which is essentially a utility token now. They also have a utility token, which is the Ethereum ERC-20, but utility token, the ERC-20 here is used more uh, for users to get mining as a service, okay? To use it during the services, to for for basically for mine block to mine for you so as the customer experience is good and the customers get more and more of the uh profit sharing this is what's going to happen in terms of the uh virtuous mm -hmm. cycle really you know just like the huawei case which we listened uh, to just now basically for mind block it's a very easy equation you see as more and more uh uh investments are put uh so basically just like the hua way case just now uh, for mind blocks it's very easy as more and more uh, investments are being uh put in here and as people get dividends here from the polymath token this will essentially drive more traffic for customers. It just works like that here. It's a very simple equation. And the more traffic here will then allow this infrastructure investment to have a lower cost structure because the cost is essentially fixed, okay? You know, the cost here is essentially fixed. So the marginal cost for any additional uh, customer is actually very, very low. And that means over time, the profits should naturally go up in time because the costs are low and that the output goes high and then this basically uh, will basically have a trajectory where you just increase your profits uh, kind of like that okay and because the cost efficiency of this as uh, mine block has been committed because you know they're going to be a very big industrial miner they are already committed to uh, providing people basically with the uh, lowest uh, cost structure not only in terms of resources uh, and all that but also in terms of utilities because you know that uh, you know the utilities price, uh, such as the electricity price, the cooling price for this can be very very high. So by pulling everything together and 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 having more and more customers again here, the utility prices basically uh, tend to go down. And not only that, because there is also another factor here which makes it into another uh, case where uh, you know you can increase more profits because as you mine the cryptocurrency say you mine the cryptocurrency such as btc or you know even bitcoin cash or even ethereum or litecoin what if the sustainability is there what if the prices of these cryptocurrencies go up and moon okay what if they go up and moon? Well, then guess what? You're going to make even more money. So another factor now that we need to consider is that is, is these, are these cryptocurrencies here, are they basically going to go up? And this is the topic of the next session because if it does so, you have a combination of a lot of uh, customers coming in due to the profit sharing. And because this infrastructure is fixed cost, you make more money, you generate more of this and these go up. You have something that's called something here and i'm i'm going to put it here okay uh, on the left side here i'm going to put it here that mind block is now ready to go to a situation where you have super profit so let's see the next section where we look on whether there's actually a pattern here where mind block uh, can make money because what they mine is going to go up in value this is the screen uh, where we see the price of Bitcoin. Okay, this is the daily price. So apparently it's gone up on a tear because on April it's only about 4,000, right? And now it went up to almost 9,000, okay? Literally touched the 9,000 before, uh, you know, apparently this is probably only a correction. So the thing is, is this sustainable? Is this based on a pattern uh, that is repeatable and a pattern that has happened before? Uh, apparently it is okay because if you talk about what 
pattern uh, this is. Uh, this is the very infamous Godzilla pattern. Uh, if you believe in Godzilla, you didn't see that? See that? So this is like the Godzilla. This is the tail of Godzilla here. And apparently when you have a pattern like this, yeah, this is the head, right? And then, of course, you, you don't see the feet here, but that, that's supposed to be the feet. When you have this, it is a very, very uh, bullish pattern. And not only have we seen this pattern, because we've seen also other patterns that support this pattern. So clearly, a uh, mind block to me, a uh, mind uh, block is, is onto something uh, big here, uh, basically, because uh, what's going to happen is if Bitcoin... Uh, it goes up, you know, then Ethereum and Litecoin is going to follow. And if they mine all these coins, there's going to be a lot of profit uh, to be made here, okay? So, uh, yeah, this is a very nice uh, Godzilla pattern there for a Bitcoin. Uh, let's see what Ethereum is doing now. Uh, this is basically the end of May. I'm doing this recording on the uh, 29th of May here. Yeah, Ethereum is also going up like that. And uh, let's see a uh, Litecoin LTC uh, USD. Uh, yeah, this one Litecoin, and the Litecoin is also going up. And and in April, look in April, it's only like sixty one dollars. Now it's like one hundred seventeen. So this clearly uh, shows that there is a bright, bright, bright future uh, for Mind Block and to make a lot of money from this. Uh, from this uh, mining operation. So here are the patterns. So we're going to support this with the Godzilla pattern that, that we saw uh, earlier in uh, the, the pattern of Bitcoin. So you see here that, uh, you know, when you compare to gold, this was gold before the 2007, 2008 crisis, it went up, but it also followed the pattern of Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin was going down and of course gold went up and Bitcoin also went up. We know what happened after here, right? Bitcoin basically did a tear, okay? It just went up all the way from about 4,000 to around 9,000, very closely to 9,000. There's also another similar pattern here between Bitcoin and also uh, the Turkish uh, Lira here. Of course, we know what happened to Bitcoin after that. So clearly the uh, case for mining is also good because if Bitcoin goes up, then uh, a lot of other uh, coins will go up and the more you mine, you're going to get more returns just from mining alone because the prices that you can sell these uh, tokens or these cryptocurrencies is going to go up. This supports the uh, mine block case and also feeds well into the uh, flywheel for mine block. Another thing that, that feeds into the flywheel is actually this rush for gold. So you know now that a lot of central banks, especially from China and also Russia, are buying a lot of gold. This is, of course, also in response to uh, the USA launching a trade war against China. So the fact that they are going into gold means that people are now flocking into safe haven assets. And we've seen how that Bitcoin is a form of safe haven assets uh, now. So as gold goes up, and here there's a comment here, the sheer size of the purchases might uh, reveal bolder motives with Moscow firing its first salvo in the coming battle for a monetary reset. So this is about a monetary reset. And if there's a monetary reset, you know gold is it, but also Bitcoin is also there. And you can see the rise in Bitcoin also means that for people in emerging countries, for example, Argentina, Bitcoin in Argentina is actually already at an all-time high, you know, because the Argentinian peso has gone down so much. So again, uh, this is another case that supports the flywheel for mind block. So as a conclusion, you know, we've gone through the business model. Definitely, there's a flywheel for growth here. I'm going to put the flywheel there. There, you see it going around and around. So I really like MindBlock because I think they bring legitimacy with a security token offering. You are like a shareholder in MindBlock. It's not like giving you a token, a utility token, and then linking it with a lot of other agreements to you know, legitimize the, the offering. And so it is a real security token. It's like a share, an equity that gives you the rights to a dividend. And this is how they can pay 75% share of the profits and make monthly payments. All of this will, of course, be to the security token by Polymath. This, to me alone, basically uh, differentiates MindBlock from all the rest and makes it really the uh, offering for uh, mining that a lot of people will have to work very hard uh, to uh, challenge without that. For now, basically, MindBlock is really redefining the uh, 
the mining uh, industry now. And for me now, it's really number one, numero uno, and that's why it gets my full back. Bye, mind blown!